What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing the largest team ever assembled for the Go Battle League as I've got the tallest Pokemon, Alona Executor, standing at 10.9 meters tall according to the Pokedex, although I think the one I'm using is actually a little bit taller than that. Then I've got the longest Pokemon, Waylord, at 14.5 meters, which for a whale isn't actually that long, but it is the longest Pokemon currently available in Pokemon Go. And then finally I've got Celesteela, which is is the joint heaviest along with Cosmoem at 999.9 kilograms. This team was a massive challenge to run, pun intended, but somehow I was able to pull off some of the craziest wins ever at Legend Rank. Now before we get into the battles, this is the final reminder that today is Go Battle Day and I'm once again running the Battle of Spice. All you have to do is win one battle with the spiciest and most unique team you can throw together in either the Ultra League and or the Sunshine Cup and submit via the form in the description. You can also find out more about the competition via the link or via my community tab. With that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. Which Pokemon are you most surprised about its actual size? Maybe it's a lot bigger than you thought it was, maybe it's a lot smaller than you thought it was, or maybe its weight just doesn't match up with its height whatsoever. Let me know in the comment section down below, and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, this is actually the first battle I did with the team. We lead into Verizion, awful lead, and the opponent responds with my Alona Executor safe swap with a wall range, so things are looking very bad for us. I'm actually going to shield the Icicle Spear here, wanting to grab a shield back, but also knowing that these Dragon Tails are actually chunking this wall range a fair bit, and the opponent throws just before I make it to Seed Bomb number two, so very good timing by this opponent, but luckily it means they can't really over farm, so so now I'm going to come back in with my Waylord. I will have to tank an Earthquake from this range, but I will be able to do that. And even if they do get to another Icicle Spear before I'm able to take them out, I should still be able to live that. So here I'm going to let this Icicle Spear go through. I know that the Surf isn't going to do that much damage, so I'm going to farm to nearly 100 energy, go for the Surf here up against the Wall Rain, and a little bit more Water Gun damage, and I'm able to take them out. Now I'm expecting the Verizion to come back in, so I barely make it to the Blizzard in time. Do they respect the damage? They don't! It nearly one-shots them, and they've got an Aggron in the back, and does this opponent know that I'm running Bulldoze on my Celesteela here? Gonna full send it, and Bulldoze does connect! It's double super effective damage, and even though it's not a good move, we nearly take them out here. I can shield the Meteor Beam, get the Air Slash farm down, and farm down the Verizion to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. They actually messaged me uh, yesterday saying that that was the battle that stopped them from hitting Legend in that set, which is really unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. They did still manage to hit later that day, so that's fine. But into the next battle, we see Swampert in the lead. I'm actually going to swap here and try to catch the potential Earthquake. And it is the Earthquake, so that's massive for me. The opponent's going to overfarm, banking a potential Hydro Cannon there before swapping into their Snorlax. Now, I did use an Elite TM to get Draco Meteor here. Here. So I'm actually going to shield here so I can get off the Draco Meteor. It's very likely that they shield back, but I don't really care. I want to land this Draco. We don't unfortunately land it, but the opponent will not be able to farm me down before I make it to a Seed Bomb. But with the debuffed attack, it doesn't do much damage whatsoever. Now I'm going to wait out the Switchcock here and then come in with my Celesteela as I will be able to resist the Body Slam damage, although superpowers will start to chunk quite a bit. So let's see, the opponent will go for a Body Slam bait, which is fine with me. They're going to go for another charge move straight away. And they go for another Body Slam bait, so that's also fine with me. Going to go for the farm down, but they make it to yet another charge move. Is it finally the superpower? No, they just go for Body Slam spam. And I'm going to swap out instantly, expecting the Hydro Cannon from the Swampert coming back in. And the opponent does go for the Hydro Cannon, so we're able to catch it on the Waylord. The opponent banks some more energy once again, swapping into Giratina. And this looks like there's only one win condition here. Going to let the Dragon Claw go through. I know I will barely live it and still make it to the blizzard do they respect the damage no they do not and we do land it we do huge damage going straight for the bulldoze here body sam's double resisted the opponent lets it go through and now they have to farm to back to back moves they don't get there in time and i'm able to farm them down and take that game so ggs to that opponent there into the next battle we see a reggie steel in the lead this is a very difficult Pokemon to beat with this team, as the Zap Cannon will be super effective against the Waylord and the Celesteela. 
and a lone executor only has resisted moves to throw. So we're going to shield the zap cannon, they get the attack drop, I'm going to farm up and try and catch the next zap cannon onto my lone executor and I'm able to do just that. This is going to be double resisted, so unfortunately it does still get the attack drop though and they come in with Galarian Moltres and shout out to Jonkus because I've actually seen him battle this opponent I think a few times at least we don't get to the Draco Meteor which is unfortunate but I know that their third Pokemon is going to be a Galarian uh, Zapdos so at least I do know that now I know that they run payback as well so this will do quite a lot of damage if they do go for it which they do and the opponent is going to go for another charge move straight away just an ancient power I should just be able to live this and now I'm going to swap into my Waylord, baiting out the Registeel once again, and now we've got a ton of energy, I really hope that two Surfs with the Water Gun damage will be enough to take them out, but it's going to be very close, we throw just before they make it to another charge move, and Surf doesn't quite take them out, and they do make it to a charge move, which is really unfortunate, I have to shield this, that would nearly take me out, and now... I know they're going to come in with their Galarian Zapdos most likely, so let's see. They do come in with the Zapdos. I'm once again going to full send the Blizzard here. Will the opponent respect the damage from the Waylord? They do. Oh, that's really unfortunate. We're going to swap into Celesteela, go for the back-to-back -back Body Sams, landing the first one. The opponent then catches the second one. Very nice play there. I'm going to completely undercharge it, and so I will be able to farm down with the Waylord, but I'm not going to come out with a move loaded, and this Glarin Zapdos has a charge move loaded. This will easily be enough to take out the Waylord, and we do lose that game, but very well played to that opponent. Into the next game, we see Alolan Ninetales. They are running Powder Snow in the lead, so that's great for us. We especially want to see it here because obviously this would absolutely destroy the Alolan Executor. They go straight for a Psy Shock there, so that's fine with me. Gonna go for a Surf, and this will do some nice damage, and it should put them into range where I can just fully Water Gun farm them down, or at least that's what I hope anyways. They go for Psy Shock number two. Can we get the farm down here? It looks like the opponent is lagging, but I think we should have got the farm down anyway, so that's fine with me. I'm going to take that. They come in with a Scrafty. We go straight for the Blizzard here, not expecting a shield, and the opponent does let it go through. We now swap into Executor and we're met with a Galarian Weezing, one of the worst matchups we could possibly have. So they're running ABA Fairy, which is really unfortunate. I did think that Executor would be safe once we got rid of the Ninetales, but that's definitely not the case. Now they did go for an Overheat, debuffing their attack. So my Celesteela actually doesn't have to worry too much, but still I will respect the damage. They very likely bait here and they go for the Brutal Swing. So they do bait. So I'm gonna wait one turn, swap there and catch the charge move onto my Waylord. They did full send the overheat this time around, which is massive for me. And now their Pokemon is invisible. I can't even remember what it was. Uh, it's a Scrafty, so we let the Power Punch go through. Good call there. Gonna go for a Body Sand. We have the back-to-back -back loaded, so they probably let this go through. And they do exactly that. And now we have to make it to a Body Slam and a Bulldoze to get rid of this Pokemon. We're going to go for the Body Slam bait. Can we grab the shield? Yes, we can. And now they make it to a charge move. Really important decision here. Do I shield it up? I do. It is the overheat. They can't have back to back. So now I can go for the Bulldoze. Bulldoze takes out the Galarian Weezing. And we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see a Tentacruel in the lead. And I saw this team a few times. Uh, I think King did just post a video with his wife's battles using this team. It's Tentacruel, Obstagoon, and Scrafty. And here, this opponent farmed up to a potential Hyper Beam. So I was very much concerned about it. So I'm going to shield it up. And the opponent baits with a Night Slash. But I think they are running Hyper Beam here. So I'm going to go for a second Surf. And this Surf should be grabbing a shield from the opponent. And then I'm eventually going to swap here, hoping I caught just another Night Slash from the Obstagoon. But no, it's the Hyper Beam. It lands and it does take me out after a few more counters. And I have now lost Switch Advantage, which is not ideal for me. Going to come in with the Waylord, but the opponent comes in with their Scrafty. This is actually fine. This is the alignment I want, but Scrafty is going to be able to boost its attack and it will just become unstoppable eventually. So we go for a Surf here, hoping they just let this go through. I need the damage, but the opponent shields it up. And now we come in with Celesteela. You'd think a Flying type should have a good matchup up against Scrafty but when it's loaded and it can keep on ramping up its attack it's pretty much unstoppable unless you've got a fighting type or a charmer as I'm going to shield the next power up punch but it's still going to ramp up their attack even more and they'll still be able to make it to yet another power up punch in this matchup here and we just can't get rid of it power up punch does big damage they get the counter farm down and I do unfortunately lose that game 
but GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Swampert in the lead, so pretty good lead matchup, but what I noticed is that Swampert usually had a Charizard in the back, so I'm going to go for a Surf here and then try to catch a move on my Alone Exeggutor and try to bait out the Charizard. So we go for the catch, the opponent holds on to all of their energy, they've probably got 100 energy at this point. We now go for a Seed Bomb, don't expect the Shield here. But yeah, the opponent does just let it go through, but I need a little bit more damage and I do put them into range where I can just farm them down with my Waylord. So I'm fine with that. They go for the Dragon Claw. It does take me out. Now I'm going to wait at the Switch Squad, come back in with my Waylord here and hopefully get the farm down before they make it to back to back Blast Burns. First one does big damage even though it's resisted, but we do get the farm down. They come back in with the Swamp Up, going to shield this up and I'm hoping that if they go for Hydro Cannon, we'll be able to catch an Earthquake, but the opponent goes for a second Hydro Cannon, which we will now be able to live. And now I can over farm here, going for a Surf just before they make it to Hydro Cannon number three. The opponent lets it go through and they've got a Shadow Glide score with two shields in the back so this is going to be close by the way earthquake would actually do quite a lot of damage in this matchup even though it is resisted so i do have to be wary of that the opponent might over farm massively and go for an earthquake and from this range it probably nearly takes us out so it's going to be very difficult we've got to call this and it is just a Night Sash bait, luckily for me. Now going to go for a Body Slam, and the opponent's very likely to farm to back-to-back -back Night Slashes here to take me out. So I go for the back-to-back -back Body Slams straight away, and this one does get them very low. It's a CMP tie, and at this point, I'm just going to swap into my Waylord, and I'm able to catch the Charge Move there. I wasn't sure if Waylord had enough health to get the Water Gun farm down, so I do sacrifice it here, get the Air Slash farm down on the Gliscor, and I take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Speaking of Shadow Gliscor, we now see it in the lead. The opponent's going to say swap into a Shadow Snorlax. I don't have the best response, so I will stay in initially. Body Slam not going to do too much damage. I'm going to chip them with a Surf and then try to catch a Body Slam onto my Celesteela. So we go for the Surf here, and this will do some nice damage. It will put them into farm down range if we're able to swap and catch on the Celesteela, which we are able to do. They go for the Body Slam there, so it is resisted. Although these licks really are chunking, and a superpower will do big damage to Celesteela. They go for it there, but it does lower their defense. The opponent actually doesn't want to get farmed down, so they swap out straight away into the guy score. We go for body slam number one, gonna go for body slam number two, and if they go for the farm down, we might even reach a third body slam in this matchup. And we are able to do so. The opponent goes for CMP, but they lose CMP. And Body Slam just takes out the Gliscor. They're fully happy to sacrifice it. What do they have in the back? They've got a Jellicent. They do farm us down, but we've got a Lolan Executor here. And now this is going to be tricky. It's very unlikely that they run Ice Beam, but if they do, that will easily one-shot us. They actually bait with a Surf, which is super unfortunate. They go for the catch, but I don't fall for it. And now I can go straight for these Seed Bombs, and they will do super effective damage to the Jellicent grabbing the first shield they've already baited so i'm going to shield the next time and they bait again which is so unfortunate gonna go for another seed bomb here and then i think i have to probably make a catch in this matchup here as shadow ball will nearly take me out but i'm able to swap and catch perfectly onto the waylord they go for the shadow ball but they undercharge it brilliant undercharge here but i'm gonna commit to the blizzard we barely get there in time and blizzard from this range takes out the jellison and we take that game so that was nearly the perfect under charge there from the opponent as they would have come out of the matchup with a Shadow Ball loaded. But unfortunately for them, I did just barely make it to the Blizzard. Now into this battle here, we lead into a Pidgeot. Very likely that they go for a Feather Dance bait, but that's fine with me. I'm still going to full send the Blizzard. They did debuff my attack, but I'm hoping it still does enough to take them out, and it barely doesn't. And now here, it's really important to note, did they bank a move there when they switched out, or did they just swap to prevent them getting farmed down? They're going to go for a Shadow Ball here. We're going to go for a Seed Bomb, and we should be able to land this and then just fully farm them down if they do let it through, which they do. And now here you will see Shadow Ball doesn't quite take us out, so that's fine. I'm going to let it go through, and I'm able to get the farm down. The opponent comes in with Cobalion. We're going to go for a Seed Bomb here. Not going to do an awful lot of damage, but that's fine. 
Now we are down a shield. It's looking quite tricky here. We're going to come in with the set of Stealer here and hopefully we can land a Bulldoze, but I don't think it's that likely. So I think I will just go straight Body Slam in this matchup, although I will farm up to enough energy for the Bulldoze before I do throw it. So they go for Sacred Sword number two. And now here we are over farming, going for the Body Slam just before they make it to Sacred Sword number three. We've got to be careful of a catch, but we go straight for Body Slam number two. And this will be able to grab the final shield from the opponent, which is big and now here I'm gonna shield this up and I should be able to make it to a surf just before they make it to the next charge move but no we don't but I know it's just gonna be a sacred sword we will live this but the opponent did actually bank that feather dance here and from this range it does take out the waylord we get the farm down but they will now be able to get the farm down up against the celesteela and we do lose that game so ggs to that opponent there into the next battle, we see Alola Muck in the lead. Pretty neutral matchup here. They are running Poison Jab, so they do quite a lot of fast move pressure. They have farmed to a potential Sludge Wave here. I'm going to let it go through, and it is the Sludge Wave. It does big damage. I farm to a potential Hyper Beam or Blizzard, going for the Surf, grabbing a shield, and making it to a last second second Surf. <laughs> that was a bit of a tongue twister there, but we go for the Surf there, dealing some decent damage, and now we can come in with the Celesteela and try to go for the farm down before they make it to two charge moves. They're going to go for a Dark Pulse. It does nearly half of our health. They get us into the yellow, but we do get the farm down, which is huge. And now the opponent's going to come in with a Shadow Swamper. I'm going to go for the Body Slam, and this will do a decent amount of damage. I'm now going to overfarm, try and catch the Hydra Cannon, but the opponent does hold on to their energy, so good play by them. And now they come in with a Trevenant. We've got two shields. I think it's best to just double shield in this matchup. Go for a Seed Bomb of my own. I know it's not going to take them out, and they did bait me there, so they will make it to a Shadow Ball in time, but that's fine. I need to get off a Seed Bomb onto the Shadow Swamper in the back there. So I'm going to shield it up. It is the Shadow Ball. Good call there. We get the farm down. We're going to go straight for the Seed Bomb here. And the opponent is very close to an Earthquake. So I'm going to try and catch the move onto the Celesteela. Did I catch the Earthquake? Yes, I did. And now I will be able to outpace them to the Seed Bomb in time. And Seed Bomb from this range will be enough to take out the Shadow Swamper. And I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, another Shadow Gliscor in the lead, where we like to see it. The opponent's actually going to stay in initially before swapping into a Jellicent, so I will respond with my Alolan Executor. Going to shield the first charge move once again, just respect the damage from an Ice Beam. They clearly don't have it as they go for Shadow Ball, and now I can overfarm going for a Seed Bomb here just before they make it to Shadow Ball number two. And we have seen we do live a Shadow Ball, so I can let this move go through. And Shadow Ball does connect, it does big damage, but it doesn't give the opponent an awful lot of farm here. I'm going to go straight for a Seed Bomb. I don't think I'd live two uh, wing attacks there, so I don't think I would have been able to get off that Draco Meteor. But we grabbed the shield anyway, which is absolutely huge. Going to come in with the Waylord here. The opponent is going to farm to the potential Earthquake before throwing, meaning I get the Surf off first. And the opponent is now going to throw their energy. I'm going to respect the damage here. And the opponent does bait with a Night Slash, and they swap into Cresselia, so that's Fine. Gonna go for a surf here to chip and then swap into my Celesteela. Now we are a steel type up against a Pokemon that can only learn moves that are resisted by the steel typing, but this actually isn't that comfortable of a matchup, especially when they are running Future Sight as that is Stab and it does hit quite hard. So they're already at Future Sight number two, and a third Future Sight will honestly take us out from this range. So I'm very concerned about that. We go for a Body Slam here, going to over farm, and the opponent goes and swaps back into the Gliscor. Very nice play. They have banked a charge move on the Cresselia, so I have to be wary of that. They also make it to a charge move in time here, but they full send the Earthquake, which is huge for me, because now I can Water Gun farm them down. They do have a charge move loaded. Hopefully they're not running Grass Knot. They are running it, but we live that. We can make it to a Surf in time. And is this going to be enough damage to take out the Cresselia? No, it's not. But we get the Water Gun farm down and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Cresselia in the lead this time around. I'm going to try and catch a move onto my Executor. But let's see. I go for the catch, but they hold on to the energy. And now this is absolutely awful. If they're running Moonblast, which they are, it's going to deal so much damage. I shield the first one. Going to have to let the second one go through. I can't afford to go down two shields in this lead matchup. I'm just going to full send the Draco Meteor. Hopefully, we can finally land a Draco with this team. And we do. It one-shots Cresselia. They come in with a Trevenant and... 
that's not ideal for us. We're going to come in with our Cellar Stealer, and even though we've got Air Slash, all of our charge moves are resisted, so it's not actually a great matchup. I'm going to use a shield. I don't expect them to bait, and they do full send the Shadow Ball here, so that's fine with me. I'm going to go for a Body Slam bait. Honestly, it's not really much of a bait because I don't think Bulldoze would take them out either. They will now make it to a Shadow Ball number two, and that will do big damage. And here, I'm going to go for another Body Slam. Maybe I should have thrown one Air Slash first, but I wasn't sure if the Shadow Claws would take us out. And now here, I chicken out. I don't go for the full farm down. I go for a Surf. Surf does take them out, and they've got a Verizion in the back. And I think that was a mistake because a Seed Bomb wouldn't have taken us out. And now this Leaf Blade does so much damage and here I would have actually made it to a surf and a blizzard and I had potential here but now I have to full send the blizzard the opponent shields it up and they're able to get the farm down and take me out with a sacred sword and take that game so GG's to that opponent there and into the final battle we lead into Talonflame a very good lead for the waylord and the opponent's actually going to stay in this matchup, so I'm perfectly fine with that. Going to go for a Surf straight away, and then I expect they're just going to go for a Brave Bird and dip. So I will respect the damage here coming from this Talonflame. And the opponent does full send the Brave Bird. They swap into Cresselia, and once again, even though this is a good matchup based on typing, it's actually not very good at all. We're going to let the Future Sight go through. Once again, they are running Future Sight, so that makes it really uncomfortable. These Body Sams just don't do much, and Bulldoze is an awful move, so we should definitely just be going for Body Sam in this matchup, but it's just not doing much damage. They go for Future Sight number two, and we are low enough where a third Future Sight will be enough to take us out, so I actually don't think I'm going to be able to win Switch Advantage here, which is quite pathetic for a Steel type up against Cresselia, but that's just how it is. Future Sight number three does take us out. We're going to come back in with the Waylord here, over farming, going for a Surf just before they make it to another charge move, and Surf is enough to take out the Cresselia. They've got a Trevenant in the back. This is going to be incredibly close here. They bank a ton of energy before swapping into the Talon Flame, and I throw a horrible timing here. I don't know what I was thinking, but we grab a shield with the Seed Bomb, so now I will just let this move go through. They go for a Flame Charge, and and here, the opponent stops attacking so that they can simultaneously KO us. And that's a really good play by the opponent. Uh, it might cost me the game here. Let's see. They go for a Seed Bomb. I let it go through. Can we get to the Blizzard in time? Yes, we can. And Blizzard, from this range, will be taking out the Trevenant. And we take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like. Leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And as for my response, I'm going to go for Waylord, not because of its size, but actually because of its weight. It only weighs 398 kilograms, which is nothing compared to its size. And actually, there are real people, obese people, that weigh more than that. So that's kind of crazy to think about. But yeah, if, if you want to see more content like this in the future, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.